to close our two days together. It's been intense, hasn't it? It's been moving at times, often, in fact. Um, and it's just been wonderful spending all this time with you, of course. But as one last thing of, and one last aspect of reconciliation, we wanted to dive in before parting. Um, this reconciliation is the one Jane Goodall, we heard Jane Goodall yesterday, very often refers to, and it's this reconcilia reconciliation between the mind and the heart, the one that truly makes us human. So our guests next will help us explore this connection between the mind and the heart, but also our connection to our bodies. So ladies and gentlemen, for our last conversation, we are very pleased to be joined by Lucy Bash and Nadia Samut. Please come and join me here on stage, ladies. Welcome to you both, Lucy and Nadia. You are both two incredible entrepreneurs who are working daily on reconciliation. You have dedicated your careers to sustainability and social impact through your innovative work. Both of you work in the food sector. We haven't talked about food very much yet during this forum, and that's why we wanted to have this conversation. Um, food in order to craft um, a healthier relationship with what we eat, of course, what we feed our bodies. Um, so first of all, Nadia, as the creator of Cuisine Libre, um, you are the first Michelin-starred chef specializing in gluten-free cooking, and you integrate sustainable food systems in the way you cook, and uh, you also teach at the University of uh, Gastronomic Sciences in Polenzo. That was my introduction, by the way, <laughs> uh, about all the wonderful things you do. And Lucy, you are an engineer and the co-founder of Too Good To Go, um, which saved more than 350 million meals in 19 countries. And you are also involved with several initiatives that aim to revolutionize uh, the food industry. And you have just literally days ago launched this um, climate house near Paris or here in Paris. And it's a community of 80 committed entrepreneurs who are working to reduce our impact on climate and the environment. Uh, wonderful achievements by both of you, of course. Um, but my first question, I guess, um, to you both, is the fact that your professional paths, careers, have been deeply rooted in sustainability and the global well-being of humans, of nature. Um, how, did, how, did, how did it start? How did this philosophy sort of grow on you? Why did you decide to dedicate your, your life to it? You want to start? Yes, thanks for, for having us. Very happy to be here to talk about that theme, which is uh, so important, I think, uh, nowadays. Um, personally, I actually started my career in the food industry, just because uh, I've always been fascinated by foods, uh, just because actually it, it touched your hearts, it touched your mind, and it touched your body, uh, obviously. So I think it's, it's really our daily partner, uh, what we put in our body, and, and, uh, and it had so many implications on on our lives, on our happiness, on our health. Uh, so for me, it was very, always very important. And I actually started uh, working at Nestle, uh, one of the biggest uh, food player. Um, and for me, I was, I had, uh, I was born in Paris. Uh, I lived uh, the 21st years of my life there. So I really felt um, the need to, to go back to, to how we create food, how do we produce food today. And actually, I could have gone to a farm, uh, I should have probably, but I went to the biggest uh, food factory um, uh, um, in the world. Um, so I was working in the food factories. Um, I produced uh, water bottles, I produced uh, coffee capsules. So all those kind of like food which are not really food. Mm. Um, and, and that's where I realized that the way we produce food today is, is totally crazy. I mean, uh, we don't really think about the impact it has on our health, the impact it has on the environment. We just produce it in a capitalist way, which is like, how can we produce as fast as possible, as cheap as possible, and really match uh, our market um, um, stakes. So that's, that's really what kind of like shocked, shocked me. I was working like days and night because usually uh, I'm a hard worker and when I do things, I, I do them 1000%. Uh, uh, and that's really where I realized, like, uh, I'm not producing food here. I'm 
just doing something uh, which is quite different from what I would have expected uh, from a food industry. Um, and so more and more I, I realized that uh, something was misaligned uh, in, the, in my belly every time I, I went to, to work. And it's also the time where I realized the, the importance of food waste. Uh, today, I don't know if you know that number, but uh, we basically throw away 40% of the food we produce on the planet. And what I had testified in my daily life, like just thinking, so stupid to throw away that yogurt because it's expired. Well, actually, if you open it and smell it, you'll know if you can still eat it or not. Um, same for uh, the old fruits and vegetables. Just because there is uh, some uh, black dots on a banana skin, you're going to throw it away, where actually it just becomes more tasty when, it's, uh, when it gets darker. So all those things that I had been uh, like shocked with in my daily life, I realized how industrialized uh, the problem was. And that's when I thought, uh, actually, if I care that much about food, I better start something to uh, start thinking about the future of food rather than kind of like uh, be part of, the, of what I call the old food system. Um, and that's how it all started, I guess. Well, thank you very much. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the example of yogurts, for instance. We are so disconnected from our bodies and from our senses that we're not even able to smell food and work out whether it's you know, edible or not. We don't even know what's in season anymore, do we, Nadia? So what about you? What about your journey with food? Um, for me, it's a bit different. I grew up in a family of uh, chefs and uh, restaurateurs. So my grandmother started with a story, then my mother took it over. And she was the first female chef to be started in France uh, in 1995. And then I grew up uh, in this family, but I was celiac, so with this disease, I couldn't even eat gluten. So um, when I understood that, I decided to take this part of gastronomy and, uh, and the importance of the gastronomy in France from my family, and I decided to create like a kind of a world that uh, could be tolerant for the intolerance first. And secondly, because I grew up in the, um, in, in the rurality, like in the in, in those uh, uh, like uh, villages um, in Provence, I decided to to understand better what was what was farming and how I could help from the seeds to the plate, and also how I could um, reconnect the people with the subtlety um, of each ingredients and giving also the opportunity to people to to feel something, to feel something when you cook, to feel something when you find your products to feel something also to regenerate your own body. And when you regenerate your body, you regenerate soil. So this is uh, my whole project and my whole programs, how to be part of the, 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 the supply chain from the seeds to the plate. You've just put the finger on something important here. There's this notion of pleasure, of joy, of cooking and reconnecting with emotions. And we kind of lost it with this industrialization of food systems, really. So tell me more about how you think we can find this balance between the mind, the body, and, and the heart um, through food, maybe, and how it translates into uh, real life. How can we reconnect with our body through food, maybe? Yeah, I think it's pretty touching to see how Nadia and I, we come from very different background. Uh, in a way, we probably had a totally different childhood, but that connection to food uh, really connects us as well in, in, in a way that it's so emotional. I mean, the, what, it's literally what we put in our body every day and somehow we completely forgot about the impact it has on, on us. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really the, the sum of what we eat that makes us who we are. Um, and yeah, because I grew up in Paris, honestly, I grew up totally disconnected from, as you say, like just seeds and soil. I, I didn't know what it was, to be honest. I mean, the first time I planted a seed and, you know, I just uh, put uh, water and uh, sun and then like uh, suddenly I had planted a courgette in my, uh, in my gouttière, uh, literally in Paris. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. And it's, it was, I felt very stupid because I was like 20 years old and I was like, wow, actually when you put uh, water and uh, sun on a seed, it grows a vegetable that I can feed myself with. And it's just uh, somehow nature is magical and we should realize that by eating every day. Um, but as you said, uh, we just 
prefer to trust uh, big industries and people who write a date and tell us like uh, until that date you can eat it after that uh, it becomes a danger for your health no it doesn't uh, actually at too good to go we we spend a lot of time working on the difference uh, between a best before date and a use by date because we realize that uh, people not understanding expiry dates is responsible for 20 percent uh, of food waste in europe just because we don't even know anymore uh, that a best before is only about quality, but it's not a hygiene date. You can perfectly eat the product after. It's even, you can, uh, you're even allowed to sell it three months after the date. But because people don't make the difference, supermarkets would rather remove it to avoid any, uh, uh, any drama in the store. And therefore, we throw away so many products that are still perfectly good to be eaten because we've lost the connection to food. So again, like economically, it's so stupid. Ecologically, it makes no sense because if food waste was a country, it would be the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gases after US and China. Wow. So it's like, that's how big the problem is. And obviously, socially, I mean, there is one billion people uh, who can't eat. There are so many uh, people struggling with food uh, every day, and we allow ourselves to throw all that food away. So for me, it's really just uh, reconnect reconnecting consumer and farmers, like from farm to f uh, from farm to fork, really understanding what food means, what food represents in terms of energy consumption, in terms of humans uh, behind it. I mean, just imagine the number of people who had to work on a carrot to end up in your plate. And yeah. when you realize that, I promise you, you'll never throw a little piece of carrot anymore because it's so important. And if you um, also realize the importance uh, of uh, a good carrot versus a bad one, a tomato yeah. in the winter or a tomato in, uh, in the summer, and you actually wait for your tomato the whole year, and then you're just so excited when in like uh, uh, June you start having your first tomatoes, um, I think all that pleasure is, uh, is huge and somehow we lost it by, uh, by being so disconnected uh, from, from nature and the food it gives us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, but just um, going back, Nadia, to your story of food intolerance and, and allergies, we note that there's an increasing number of people who are suffering from them. And uh, some studies show that there might be a link with pollutants, for instance, and the way we produce food. So can you maybe expand a little bit on, on our broken relationship with food and food systems? And there again, how we can balance it all. Um, so we have this harmony between the food, the mind, the heart, everything. Yeah, I think that, of course, yeah, the allergies and intolerance are increasing. That's true. Yeah. But um, it's maybe because of the way of uh, culture first. But there is other things that develop because the way of life also. The, and it's, for me, it's a holistic way of seeing the life. I mean, when I grew up uh, in, this, uh, in this place, it was like just uh, uh, farms, uh, people uh, farming. Uh, at school, we were uh, learning uh, how to cook also, uh, that they don't do anymore in that school. So it's very important for me to bring back um, the, how to say, the rules of, uh, of life, knowing that food is three times a day. So we have to care about it. And I would like to come back to a nice stories that I have. I've been working working on chickpeas since 10 years. It's a big project for me, like um, working first with the farmers, you know, in the regeneration of soils. Uh, we use uh, chickpeas and um, I work with them just to, to inspire them in working on, this, uh, on these legumes. And then after that, I brought it back uh, in my kitchen and in some other kitchen also at school, uh, this chickpea, and nobody knew exactly what we could do uh, just hummus, maybe, mm. or um, a salad of chickpeas. And I was like, why don't you start thinking about the imagination of the chickpea? And we start working and making milk of chickpea. With this milk, making ice cream of chickpeas. And working on that with the imaginaire of the people and feeling like a dream and understanding that. And for me, it's very important in my work today as we could say a famous chef, just to use this fame also to make the people understand better what could be like a dream and the ideal or in the, in the kitchen and giving like energy and power for the people just to connect all the line from the farmer 
to uh, grow to grow uh, those uh, those plants and then to to the chefs and then uh, to the consumer to give them maybe like a new madeleine de proust like new ideas new memories of those ingredients that are going to be very important in the next years yeah, that, that's and sorry can i just jump in and say um are chickpeas the new soya beans mm -hmm. For instance, ah, in our country, uh, chickpea is very important, and in Mediterranean, we always grew chickpeas. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing, Lucy. I know you want to, to follow up, but we've run out of time. Um, I just so wanted to testify that I, I tasted the chickpeas of Nadia, and uh, it is a dream. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so we need to wrap up, and I'd like you all, very briefly, maybe, um, to tell us how. Um, we can join your journey, this journey of, of balance and sustainability through the way we eat. What could be a call to action here? I always say that um, acting is visceral and not mental. So if, just, if you just look around in all the people, I say that I am nourricier and not a chef. Nourricier is like a nourisher, a we nourisher, say. A feeder. Yeah. A feeder. We are chef. feeders and we are all feeders because we cook every day, we transmit things. So yeah. just thinking better in the subtlety of each element of the ingredients and the way we plant, with the way we buy it and the way we cook it. It's very important. I think words matter and nourishing yourself rather than just feed yourself or eat sounds a little bit different, doesn't it? There's this notion of doing good to you, not just physically, but also mentally, I guess. Lucy. Yeah, I was about to say, for me, it's about listening to your guts and uh, really feeling what's in there. And usually uh, when, you're where, when you are at the place where you're passionate, uh, everything happens uh, and you feel proud and you feel happy and you feel energized. So yeah, don't stay too much in there, uh, but uh, go back to your guts and to your body and your heart and uh, Usually that's a, a great way to find a place that will also t satisfy your head. So that's a wonderful advice. message. Listen to your guts, guts instinct, right? <laughs> Nadia and Lucy, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. That was a great conversation, too short, sadly, um, but definitely whetted my appetite here. Thank you very much, Lucy and Nadia.